we're live from San Francisco. We're here with illustrator Stephanie DeAngelis. Hello, everybody. And we're very excited to have everyone join us. I'm Ariadne Ramundaki, so you can call me Ari. And we want to see where everyone's from. Say hello in the chat. We really encourage you to greet us, ask us questions. Stephanie's here to show you her process as an illustrator, and she's going to be creating a really cool project for you today. Um, just a couple things while we get started. We're having a portfolio review today. So check out the portfolio review tab at the top of the chat box here on Behance, and you can submit your portfolio. We'll be happy to look at those later on in the stream, and I'll be reminding you. So that's a great opportunity to have us and all your fellow peers look at your portfolio, and it's a really safe space. Um, so I encourage you to do that. And we also have a giveaway today from Sticker Mule, so stay tuned in the chat. You can win 100 stickers, three by three inch custom stickers with whatever design you want. So that's a great deal. Yeah. Steve from New Zealand. Carolina from Canada, Rosemary from Miami. England. Yes. Kevin from England. Sweden. And we have a full day today. So we just had the daily creative challenge with Val. She showed you how to do the distort. Um, I don't remember, actually, I didn't watch it. But it was really cool. Um, and now it's us. And then Julian Crespo is doing the XD creative challenge 1130. Pacific, and then we have Jesus Andrea doing Adobe Live in XD prototyping. So there's a lot of XD stuff today, and you have all your day planned out for you. Yeah. You don't have to do anything else, you can just watch. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Hi, Tim. Hi, Michelle. Um, so we have a lot of people. Yeah, thank you for the comment on the coveralls, <laughs> Carolina. <laughs> yes, I am ready for work. <laughs> <laughs> She only illustrates when she's wearing yeah, overalls. Yeah, you have to get in the zone. Because <laughs> you never know what paints could come out of the iPad. Yeah, or you need to have some place to clip your, you know, your Apple Pencil or your regular pencil. Oh, yeah. You never know. So while people are joining, let's introduce you a little bit. Yeah. So you're joining us from LA. Yes, I'm from have Los Have you Angeles. lived there your whole life? Yeah, okay. yeah. So born and bred in LA. Mm -hmm. and. How long have you been illustrating? I've been drawing all my life, but professionally illustrating, I would say like the past five years. Okay. Yeah, and I, I studied illustration and painting in school, but then did a switch over to design um, and started working in publishing after college, digital publishing, and there was a need for editorial illustration work. and. Mm -hmm. So my boss in the office was like, can anyone illustrate? And I kind of jumped on that opportunity and started sharing stuff, and it's history from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That's such a dream to be just in an office where someone needs an illustrator, and you're like, sure. Yeah. I'm already here. Yeah. It was really awesome. Um, That's and, great. Yeah. And now, are you freelancing or working at okay. a company? So I do both. Okay. <laughs> uh, my nine to five, I work in advertising as a designer. Mm -hmm. um, and then my five to whenever is freelance illustration. Yeah. Cool. So I do both. And I like having, you know, being able to touch on both sides of my like, creative interests. Mm -hmm. And I found that everything I learn, I've learned like working in advertising, I can bring into like my personal work and a lot of stuff I learned in my personal projects I can bring into my full time. So it's really nice to be able to work between the two. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, let's start with your project today. Yeah. And introduce what you're going to work on. Absolutely. Fire um, up the iPad. Whoop. There we go. Alrighty. Hi, Alberto. Hi, Anil. Welcome everyone who's joining. Say hello and tell hello. us where you're from. I know a lot of you have just joined and stay tuned because we're doing portfolio reviews today. So you can submit your portfolio, use that portfolio review tab at the top of the chat. And also stay tuned because we have other surprises coming. Yeah. So when you s start in Fresco, what dimensions do you use? Yeah. Depends like what your totally. final product is. Yeah, a lot of it depends on the final product, but I 
like to always do things as like the highest resolution or, or create my canvas as the highest resolution as possible. Mm -hmm. um, the great thing about Fresco is that you can work, it's vector and raster based. So if you make something, maybe it's smaller, but then you want to scale it up and it's a vector, obviously it's going to maintain that image quality. Um, but so I'm gonna start off my canvas with like 4,000 by 4,000 maybe, or 4,000 by 4,500. Um, go because today I want to yes I don't know if you guys can see this <laughs> but we can use the GoPro to show your um, yeah notebook. it's okay but um so I sketched out a little idea of what I wanted to make <laughs> um and recently I have been getting into animation which has been really fun because I love bringing my work to life and I think that you can really achieve a lot even with just the really simple animations um and I find that they're fun to look at. I love, I just really, really respect and love um, animators. Yeah, there we go. So hopefully you can see, I, I sketch out a little idea. I, I get asked about my creative process a lot and it's kind of boring. I sit at a computer and, and wait until my ideas come. So I, I wanted to explore that and create a little animated GIF of a person on their computer doing work, kind of bobbing along to the music. So that's cool. what we'll be working on today. Is that how you work? Are you listening to music a lot? Oh, always. Cool. Yeah, always. <laughs> All um, right. So starting with a little pencil sketch. Yeah. Um, so we have yeah, the pixel brushes. I feel like Fresco is relatively new-ish. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's really great. I love this program so much um, because you can work between the two. And so I'll start off with a pixel to do a little sketch. Have my idea here. Do you ever upload a picture of your sketch and like trace over it? Yeah, I do that. It's, I feel bad because I used to love drawing on with pencil and paper the most, but I yeah. think ever since I started working digitally, my ability to draw with pencil and paper has like gone down so much. Oh, or really? like, I, I, see, I like notice myself trying to, oops, sorry. Um, I noticed myself starting to really like do want to like pinch in or hit Command Z or something <laughs> like that. So it's very yeah, it's funny. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are easier digitally. Hi Leona. Hi everyone who's just joining. So we're doing some digital illustration on Adobe Fresco with Stephanie DeAngelis. She's going to create a little animated GIF of someone illustrating something and listening to music and bobbing their head. <laughs> Hi Dee, welcome back. Good to see you in the chat. People are talking about, is it GIF or GIF? Ooh. The eternal debate. I don't know. It's whatever you want to yeah. say. But if you say GIF, I'll just think you're weird. <laughs> but it's fine. Because maybe I'm weird. Yeah, I always get asked that. And I'm like, I don't know. I wish I knew the answer. <laughs> Alrighty. There's the person. So when you work at um, your advertising job, are you doing illustration there too? Or is it other design? Uh, it's a little bit of everything. Um, a lot of illustration. I always I, I always get nervous like when I, in like a professional work setting, because I illustration has become very popular and I don't want to be like, I'm an illustrator, hire me for this job. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a little bit of everything. A lot of design, animation, um, illustration stuff too, uh, sourcing illustrators for jobs has been something I've recently been doing as well and I've really loved being able to have the ability to kind of art direct stuff like that and, mm -hmm. and find different people to bring on for projects. Um, so yeah, a little bit of everything. A lot of sitting in meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that. That's cool that you can support other illustrators by bringing them in for projects. Yeah, I've noticed recently um, a lot of projects I have gotten to have been from like my friends who are illustrators who maybe like can't bring, can't, don't have time for a project or 
you know, someone reaches out to them that they know in their network and they're like, we're looking for someone with this style. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's really nice to be able to do both um, and to work with people. And I think that at least in the community of illustrators that I've become friends with, like on social media or like in real life, um, everyone's very supportive and helpful and nice. And we want to see each other succeed. And yeah, so, yeah, it's really cool. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Clever. Yes, I do this all the time <laughs> on Fresco. I take a picture of my sketch and then I just use that as a base because yeah. I'm still at the point where analog sketching comes easier to me. Um, and I think it depends on what you're doing. Like if I'm doing a lettering project, it's for some reason a pencil and paper allows me to create curves naturally. Yeah. Like the way it goes naturally will really be informed by how my hand is working with the pencil. And then when I trace it later with the vector brush, for example, it follows that. Whereas if I start with the iPad, it might not have that soul in it. It's kind of like soulless yeah. curve. <laughs> I definitely get that. How yeah. long have you been uh, lettering? Um, probably like five years. That's awesome. Yeah, it started out with making cards for people and oh, that kind of thing. I love Just it. Like, or sketching things. But the iPad makes it so easy to make something that you can apply to any surface. Like, for example, I made custom stickers with Sticker Mule last week. I love it. What did, what did they look like? Um, they have <laughs> this message that says, you suck less than most people. It's one that. of my Valentine's Day I things. Love it. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, I can use, because I, I host these streams and I'm always like, you can use this promo code and get 10 free stickers. And I was like, I've never used that promo code. So that was cool. Seeing something you created on a physical object yeah. was really cool. Yeah, I, I love Sticker Mule. I've actually um, used them to produce stickers a lot in the past. Yeah. And it's really amazing quality. Um, really amazing quality as well as really fast turnaround, I feel like. And it's really Yeah, they're affordable. really fast and um, good service too. So what other physical objects has your work been on? Um, I have done stuff on t-shirts. I have done a lot of print material, which has mm -hmm. been really cool. Um, I was asking Stephanie earlier about how she started, and she said her first freelance client was anthropology. Yeah. Um, so like five, four or five years ago, when I was working in, at the digital publisher, drawing things, I, I really hadn't developed a style um, and was working in all different mediums. And I did these um, rose cocktail <laughs> illustrations. And they were very watercolor, very different than what I do now. Um, and they saw the work on Instagram and they're like, we love this, we would love to put this on a product. And so they used the thing you already made? Well, I had to remake it. Okay. <laughs> Cause it, I couldn't um, like, you know, write like the rights for stuff um, for my other job. I couldn't just give that to them verbatim, but I basically oh, okay. recreated it and they put it on a tea towel. <laughs> which That's I think cool. might still be available, but I'm not sure. Did you get one? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but I, it cracks me up when I look at it because it's so different than what I draw now. And if someone were to see that, they probably wouldn't think that that's my work. <laughs> yeah. Well, how that was five years ago, you said? Yeah. Yeah, you so, evolve so much. You really do. Time. I know I've, I've noticed um, in the past few years, sometimes I like to go back and look at, oops, sometimes I like to go back and kind of give my own reviews of myself. Like I think, especially when you do a lot of personal work, you don't get critiques. So you, I think yeah. a good thing to learn is like how to critique yourself um, and how to like, yeah, kind of take notice your progress, see what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, see if you're 
um, leaning into a different style or, yeah. It's just fun to kind of like look at that stuff over time, I think. Yeah, it's a big lesson. Yeah. I think that's actually one of the reasons I love freelancing so much and I feel like my style and um, abilities have gotten to where they are because mm -hmm. you get to work with like really cool art directors or designers or creative directors who sometimes you, you give a sketch and you're like, I don't know if this is good. And they're like, great, <laughs> we love it. Let's go on. And I'm like, you do? But then sometimes <laughs> they give really, really awesome, concise feedback. And I think that's such a valuable, um, I think that's such a valuable thing to have um, yeah. this feedback. And you can kind of see how you grow and get better. Totally. So we have 13 minutes till our chat and win. So all you have to do is stick around, as Tim said, thanks Tim for your <laughs> puns. Stick around in the chat and we'll pick a random winner who's active in the chat to win 100, I almost said 10, 100 <laughs> free custom stickers from Sticker Mule. So we have anyone new joining us, let us know, say hi in the chat. Um, who else has been working on Fresco? What have you been illustrating in Fresco? Let us know. How did you develop the style of like the small head? <laughs> <laughs> I used to, I mean like in school, was very bad at drawing people. Um, like the proportions, there's all these different like things. Rules. Yeah, rules are like, this is how you draw this, or this yeah. is how, whatever. And uh, yeah, I just struggled with that so much. And so when I started drawing people again for like editorial stuff, I was like, ooh, let me, you know, since it's like editorial, it's very conceptual, I was like, mm -hmm. maybe I can break away. Break away. And yeah. I think, um, my design background lent itself to, I think my design background came in play with that, so. Yeah, yeah. it's really cool. It's very distinctive. And I think it's, Oops. it's pleasing to the eye. I can't really explain, but there's something that's pleasing to me about how it's not really reality, yeah. but it is grounded in reality. It's yeah. Like if you were trying to be drawing like a still life and it was exactly like what reality is, your eye would focus on the details and the wrong things, I feel. I feel like this lets you just feel the feeling and um, instead of being like, oh, there's one finger is like, yeah. Further than the other. Yeah. Or Jordan says rules are meant to be broken. Yes. Yes. I agree with that totally. Jordan is right. Yeah. When anyone ever asks me, like people who, I mean, I'm still novice, trust me. <laughs> we all are learning and in the phases of that. But when anyone ever asks me, I, I do think it's really good to take formal drawing classes or, or, or find different formal drawing education, whether it's through YouTube and stuff, because I think there are some really good fundamental skills you can learn. Mm -hmm. And then once you understand that, yeah, you can break the rules and kind of do what you want, <laughs> which yeah. is fun. All righty. We did have a few people join. Hi, Paula. Hi, Mohammed. Hi, Cesar. Jim. A lot of people are new. Mm -hmm. New to Adobe Live or new to Fresco? Hi, bye. Jack says, I won sticker mule stickers and got some donut stickers printed. Ooh. They turned out awesome. That sounds cute. Clever says, I'm continuing a near daily drawing practice using fresco instead of pencil markers and ink. I'm still improving. Nice. That's great. If you can do it consistently, I'm sure you're getting better. Muzna is asking which iPad you're using. I have the 15-inch iPad Pro. So it's the, it's not the most recent one, but the one before that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I really love this. I think if you are interested in learning digital stuff, the iPad is super 
user friendly, um, and it's like a really great way to kind of like, yeah, get used to digital work. Mm -hmm. um, I started drawing in on the Cintiq tablet, actually. Oh, okay. So when I, I noticed a couple of my friends who are also illustrators were working on the iPad, um, and I really, really loved the way it looked, and I really liked the fact that it's really portable. <laughs> um, so I got that and started practicing on there. Yeah, it's so easy to bring with you everywhere. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> started posting on YouTube more frequently, still try and post an IG every day from Eric. Yeah, that's cool. I love watching YouTube tutorials. I think that's where I've also learned a lot of stuff too. <laughs> Do you post videos? No. <laughs> I sometimes post um, process stuff on Instagram. That's yeah. probably the one platform I post the most on. Um, and I, yeah, I really like to watch tutorials. A lot of illustrators I follow will post their process mm -hmm. and it's very mesmerizing, I think, as most people know. Um, whereas most people, you know, seem to really respond to that and want to know, like, how you're working or how you've developed what you're working on. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna give her a coffee cup because if we are talking about the creative process. Essential. Essential. <laughs> Jack says, I also started on the Cintiq. I still love my Cintiq, especially as an additional monitor at work, but the iPad is just so, so much more mobile. Yeah, I totally agree. Character. Yeah, I kind of started moving back onto the Cintiq a little bit more because I've been learning animation. Um, like I've been learning After Effects. I took a course in that, and so I feel like I like having, to, I like being able to see my timeline like really large in front of me and can mm -hmm. like pull things out from there. All right, so I think that's pretty good as a starter sketch for what I want to do. Bigger in the frame. There we go. Great. Anthony, what fan art do you do? What are you a fan of? Ooh, fan art. I don't do a lot of fan art, but I have done some Stranger Things fan art in the oh, past. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. I wonder what fan art Anthony does, too. Yeah. And what everybody does. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you do. Amanda says, all I did in Fresco are some planets. That's cool. That's great. They got some cool textures. Yeah, I love that Fresco has all of the Kyle Webster brushes built in now. Mm -hmm. um, that I have definitely been using a lot <laughs> to add texture. Alrighty, so oh, I'm going to work on bobbing the head back and forth. So I'm cheating a little bit here, but not really. <laughs> uh, because if you get the transform tool, you can start to move stuff. And it kind of looks a little wonky right now with all the layers over it, but this way you can kind of preview what you have underneath. Yeah. Um, and typically when I'm doing like GIFs like this too, I'll start in Fresco and I'll bring it into Photoshop and pop open the timeline tool so that I can just preview how things start looking and kind of work back and forth between there. Oops. This is inspiring. I want to do this. Yeah. Now. Now that I'm watching you. <laughs> Hi, Stefano. How are you? Welcome. I want. Bye. I would love to draw plant. Plants yeah. are fun to draw. I think and that's my favorite. Thing they to have draw. very wide appeal. Yes. Are you a plant no one, person? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no one will say they don't like a plant drawing. It's just impossible. And yeah. you can be super abstract with it, and it still looks great. Maharshi says, I've been watching a lot of Bob Ross streams on Twitch and using Fresco oil painting brush to create my scenes. That's so Pretty awesome. Pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. There's very realistic oil 
brushes on Fresco. I love showing them to people if I have my iPad around and I'm with my family or something, I'm like, check this out. Yeah. And they're like, what? I and then they it. pass the iPad around and I have all these fresco projects that are just like paints. Yeah. Because it's like my little cousin. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, that also, if someone wants to play around with it, I will occasionally be going through and I just see a bunch of squiggles and I was like, what is that from? I was like, oh, yeah. someone was just playing around with it. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Robzilla's here. Drawer's gonna draw. That's true. <laughs> Tanvir, I need to know another similar tool like Adobe Fresco. Do you think Fresco is more user friendly? If you have an iPad, you can download it and check it out. I think you should try it and see. It just takes some practice to get used to the iPad and um, it's not that hard to learn the interface of Fresco. It's pretty intuitive. Yeah. So I would say it's very easy. I agree. If you're a beginner. Yeah. Oh, I think if you're, yeah, if you're a beginner, I think, oh my goodness. One of the really cool things I've noticed that there's like a seamless quality between all the apps. Mm -hmm. So if you're used to working in Photoshop or have any familiarity with Photoshop, I think Fresco is very easy to pick up. And I think you can customize your workspace a lot, and there's a lot of really cool tricks. Um, I don't know if it's still beta, but there's a feature where if you draw a straight line, yeah, it pops to that, <laughs> which is also very good. Yeah, I think that's still beta. I'm not 100% sure, but I have, I have that on mine, which is cool. Yeah, I love Anthony it. Anthony says, I mostly do anime or cartoon-based fan art. Oh, I love that. Oh, cool. So we have two minutes till our chat and win countdown. So all you have to do is just stay in the chat and we'll let you know, I'll prompt you when the chat and win is happening. And you can win free stickers with whatever design you want, which is very cool. And then you can put them on your laptop. Yes. Or your suitcase, which is my new surface for stickers because I ran out of all other spaces. Yes. <laughs> or a reusable water bottle. <laughs> yes. Yeah. My reusable water bottle, I put stickers on it to identify it, and then I lost it, and no one what returned about? it. Oh, no. But yeah. So I lost the stickers, <laughs> which is the sad part. That is. I feel Hi, bad. Richard. Alrighty. Muzna, are you saying that the illustration needs to have a name? Why don't you suggest something? What kind of name do you think she evokes for my document? Hmm. <laughs> maybe you guys can comment and title this piece yeah, in here. Yeah, maybe during the chat and win. Yes. You can title the illustration or give her a name. Yeah. That'll be fun. Anne Marie says, I think Fresco is very intuitive. Yes, I absolutely agree. <laughs> There's some discussion about scheduling posts on Instagram. I feel like that's helpful if you're trying to post something every day, which I don't, it sounds like so much, but do yeah. you schedule your posts? No. It's just whenever you have <laughs> yeah. something to show. Yeah, I think. Sometimes I have a lot of, I feel pressure to post things, but at the same time, I think like whenever you're comfortable with it, I don't, yeah, if you can keep up a schedule, that's great. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Stickers are good to put on your toolbox too. <laughs> oh yeah, especially with your overalls in your toolbox. Yes, exactly. All right, so we're at our chat and win deadline. So let's go straight in. So tell us what name you want this girl to have in the illustration. We're back from chat and win, so let's hear 
your names. Let's get in the chat and Frida Kahlo. you can give us, oh, Frida Kahlo, <laughs> give us your name that you're thinking of. And all of you are in the running to win the free stickers. So sticker hype, let's go. Yes. Agnes, Lakeisha, Anne, Darcy, Susie, Joe, Lana. <laughs> I like to win, yes. <laughs> Hello, Anthony. Joy. Lola. I like the name Lola. Stickers, stickers, I love them. Rosemary. Yeah. <laughs> Rosalia. Ooh, I like that. Rosalia. Yeah. All right, nice. let's see who's the winner. Muzna, you're the winner. Congratulations. Congratulations. You get 100 free stickers. And then you have to tell us what stickers you made. And cool. for everyone else, even if you didn't win, you can get 10 free stickers if you go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 20. So definitely go to this URL and 10 free stickers, or 10 stickers for $1, almost free. And you can upload your custom design. Um, it's really great to try out the service. That's what I did last week. And I was so happy with it that I got more. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're back to did we agree on the name? Oh, and Maharshi's saying, why should it be a person's name? I agree. That's a good it question. It could be anything. <laughs> well, we haven't agreed, but we heard a lot of good submissions. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna get coloring. Do you use similar color palettes across your work? Yeah, uh, usually I, I really love color. Um, I try to keep a consistent color palette um, in the work that I do and have really tried to like, hone in on a, a palette that I typically work in, but Sometimes I like to change it up and, and find new colors. Maybe something that inspires me or something, maybe I'll, I'll take a photo of something pretty or like um, a nice scene or mm -hmm. I take a lot of photos of plants and bring those in and, and I drop the color off of that. Yeah. I think I want to give this girl a green sweater. Oh, Eric says the name should be Flow for Flow State. Yeah. That's funny, I like that. <laughs> Nice. Congrats, Musna. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Tanvir. Anthony says Talana. That's an interesting name. A lot of times I hear names and I'm like, oh, that name is so interesting. Or like, how do you pronounce it? And then I realize that my name is very strange. <laughs> or I'm like, this person's <laughs> name is different. And then they're like, your name is different. <laughs> I'm Greek. Yes. Yes. I feel like you have a... I have a very long Greek name. Gr yeah, a very Greek name. <laughs> That's awesome. Have you been to Greece yes. recently? Yeah, I go every year. Oh, so cool. So it's a good place to be from because it's never tiring to go there. Yes. <laughs> it's always fun to be there in the summer. So we have the portfolio submission deadline in about an hour. All you have to do is go to the portfolio review tab right above the chat here on Behance and submit your portfolio. We will be looking at two of those. So two of those will be selected to be reviewed on this stream. And we'll do that once this um, deadline is over. So I encourage you to do that. It'll be really fun to get a few submissions and um, the two that are reviewed you'll be able to have your work shown in front of everybody, which is kind of intimidating. I know it's scary sometimes to expose your work to this whole world of Adobe Live, but everyone is so supportive of each other and even your peers or everyone else on the chat will also have feedback for you. And um, I think it's a great opportunity. Yeah. and will be really nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's definitely something that's such a beneficial opportunity to mm -hmm. get reviewed by 
others in your creative industry. Yeah. Oops. How do you pronounce the O in your name, Tim? That's what I get a lot. Yes, Tim, I actually don't know how to pronounce it. Can you, can you um, phonetically post it in the chat? <laughs> Tanvir, you spelled my name right, which is an achievement in itself. <laughs> um, it's Ariadne Ramundakis. Yes, Anthony said, don't be afraid to show your work. I totally agree. I think yeah. Behance is a really great platform for that too. And I mean, Instagram, social media is really fun as well. But I think people get nervous, but it's your work and you should be proud of it. And it's fun to share with the world. And it also motivates you to work on it. Like even if you're not going to share or submit your portfolio, maybe this will, this prompt will make you think, oh, I want to submit my portfolio next time. So I'm going to work on it. Yeah. And we all need those. We all need that push. So whatever it inspires in you, I feel like it's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Eric Sue, my name is so easy. <laughs> but you have that little difference because you have a K in your name. So you spice it up a little bit. Who's going to submit their portfolio? Let us know. What projects is everyone working on in the chat? Oh, yeah. I love to hear what my friends work on and mm -hmm. hear different projects. Richard, did you think our voices were switched? <laughs> Who has a deep voice? <laughs> The girl in the boy blue had the deep voice. The girl in the white had the high voice. I think <laughs> they were listening and then they looked and saw who was talking. But do I have a high voice? Is it high? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Rosemary said, this will teach me even though I don't have an iPad yet to use Fresco. I'm just learning. Yeah. Yeah, if you watch. Mm -hmm. Watching is the first step. Oh, absolutely. Alberto's creating content for multiple accounts, the usual. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> Just creating content, content over here, no big deal. Yeah. Jim is doing the Photoshop challenge. Ooh, nice. That's really fun. Yeah. So. We did have the daily creative challenge earlier today, and you can rewatch that as well. So you can go to the replays, rewatch that, and then you can share your work in the Photoshop Discord, which is really cool because you can get feedback from other people, and um, it's a great community in there. Jordan, working on a few small sketches to finalize in Photoshop. Great. Anthony's working on a visual identity redesign. Almost done with it, just hitting those last tweaks. Wow, cool. Can you share more? What kind of identity is it? Is it a brand? Is it a big company? Something small? That's really fun. Jeffrey says, the first step is admitting you have a Photoshop problem. Because <laughs> I said the first step is watching. <laughs> Michelle has been creating content for a new Instagram account. Is that your own account or is it a client that's asked you to create content for them? 
That's fun. Hi, Jan Eric. Anne Marie's making Valentine's. Yes, it is the week to make Valentine's. Yeah. Muzna is making an invitation card for a wedding. Oh, illustrate her children's book, Kendra. How awesome. That's really cool. Have you done a children's book before, Kendra? Anthony's working on a big company brand. Hmm. He was asking if you're able to rest your hand on the screen while yes. you're, yeah. Oh yeah, you can, except sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you might accidentally tap, but there's an undo redo button, which is really easy. And yeah. I usually have a sleeve, so I feel like it slides across the screen. But yeah, I always rest my hand on here. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard not when yeah. you can't. If you couldn't do that, it would be really difficult with the stylus. Anthony says, just learn to blend colors in fresco using the marker brush. Nice. Cool. Bai is saying, I, I'm cleaning up my desktop. <laughs> That's a worthwhile pursuit. Marlith says, hi, Stephanie. Hi. I think I know, I think I see some familiar names in here. So yeah. welcome everybody and thank you. <laughs> Welcome, friends of Stephanie. Yes. Oh, Kendra says, this is my first children's book. I'm so excited she found my work and trusted me to take this on. It's also her first book. That's, That's very so exciting. fun. And congratulations. That's such a fun project to work on. Yeah. And I think books are just a nice different Thing, especially when you know you're gonna have something printed at the end of the day that you can have forever mm -hmm. instead of just digital stuff. <laughs> yeah. Jan, Eric, I have zero files on my desktop. I'm probably the most organized viewer here. Probably. We're gonna give you an award. <laughs> yes. Be, you should expect an award in the mail. Tiago, loving the stream. Tips in learning how to draw more confident lines? Practice. Yes. I would say <laughs> confident lines, I guess, smoother lines, what you mean too? Yeah, I think. I think smoother is yeah, what they mean. More smooth, yeah. I like to, sometimes I'll zoom in really close to a composition to really get the details, but I found that when you kind of step back from it and just have more like just natural strokes and not worry so much and um, certain programs like Fresco have line assist or like the straight line assist mm -hmm. um, like I showed earlier. But yeah, I think practicing on pen and paper or with pencil and paper help. But yeah, I think it's just something that over time you mm -hmm. get more comfortable with doing. Yeah. And also it helps to have multiple layers that you're working off of. Like if mm -hmm. you look at the pencil sketch, the lines aren't straight. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that helps you, like, it's one less thing to worry about when you're doing the final thing and your eye can kind of follow that line and do a straighter line. Yeah, a lot of my sketches are very um, rough. <laughs> so when I no, I have to send client work. I do try to clean them up as much as possible because I think that helps convey what your idea is to the client. But yeah, for the most part, they're always a little, they really are rough sketches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amanda says, so many cool projects. I'm designing a navigation bar for my company's new product. Wow. And she's like, boring. Cool. <laughs> but that's really essential. You're doing important stuff. Helping people find things. Yeah, definitely. Navigating. Uh, Jan, if you have any organization tips, you should definitely share that as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since you're 
talking so much about how organized you are. You need to help us out. Yeah, I've definitely learned um, file management is really helpful to you. File naming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I will name this document eventually. But yes, <laughs> file naming is very helpful. I'm definitely very guilty of having a lot of untitled one mm -hmm. <laughs> on my desktop. <laughs> So those of you that have joined recently, just a reminder that we have a portfolio review in about 40 minutes. And you can submit your portfolio through the tab right above the chat here on Behance. Jeffrey says, I love drawing on the iPad. It's like having a pen that never runs out of ink. Yes. And it can be any color you want. Yes. And any type of pen, too. Yes. We really are spoiled. Yeah. With this. I think about that a lot. What are you thinking? We want to know. What am I thinking? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Did someone ask? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't <know>. I'm <laughs> thinking about the colors I want to put in my composition, mostly. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one thing I probably play around with the most is what color I want. I, I feel like even though I don't own any cl pink clothing, don't really like pink. I feel like I gravitate towards pink a lot in my work. Mm. Um, and I've been trying to give myself a personal challenge of not just defaulting to that. Oh. So, yeah. so now every time you're in the color brick, you're like, don't do pink. Yes, don't do pink. <laughs> nice. Getting the I Charlotte says, sold, getting the iPad now. All right. Yes. <laughs> Now that you said pink, I feel like pink would be such a good I know. color I here. I think I am. Like, I think, you know what? I think we're going to make her hair pink. Oh, that would look so good. It's just such a good contrast to a lot of colors. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> When you're in the groove, it's the best meditation, says Jeffrey. Yes. 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 I totally agree with that. Sometimes when I just need a moment to calm down or a break or feel overwhelmed, I'll just kind of, I'll go find a nice little spot either in my house or backyard and just draw. And it's very relaxing. I definitely think art is a really great way to express yourself. Mm -hmm. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Tanvir says, wow, I'm impressed on Adobe Fresco. Thanks, guys, for live. Yeah. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Jan is keeping the advice coming for organizing. Using color tags on Mac is a great way to organize files. If yes. you sort by tags in the Finder view, it's not just one big list anymore. That's true. Yes. I feel like I go through phases of using the tags, and I'm not consistent, which is my problem. But if I was consistent, that would be a great way to organize. Yeah. And being organized is so important. It really is. It saves a lot of time. It really, really does. Or if you ever need to go back and find a file. Yeah. I've been digitizing all my family's old home videos. Oh, how cool. Yeah. It's fun, but there's a lot of them. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I was just thinking about that because organizing is a big task. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's like everything's organized by year, but then there's multiple things in the year. And I'm trying to figure it out. Because it's all fun to have like thousands of videos of your family, but then if you want to watch one of them and you have to look through thousands of things, you're never going to watch it. Yeah, I definitely get that for sure. Do you have a favorite um, freelance project that you've worked on recently? I do. I recently did this really large scale piece for a self-driving all-electric car company. I'm sorry, I was trying to remember what exactly. Uh, an all-electric self-driving car company actually based out of San Francisco. Oh, awesome. And it was the first really large-scale piece I did. It's on my Behance account if you guys want to check it out. But yeah, it was a really fun piece to work on and I had never worked on something um, that large scale before. The final piece was like, it was eight feet wide, and six feet tall. Wow. So yeah. Like for their office? For um, a new product that they were releasing. It was kind of part of like all of the, it, it, what the ask was to reimagine a city where like the burdens of traditional car ownership weren't there. So mm -hmm. a city that, you know, maybe was more considered about environmental stuff, like envi being environmentally friendly and a city where like you don't have to worry about roads because yeah. you, you don't need to have a car. So yeah, it was really cool. I liked it. I got to draw a lot of plants in it too. <laughs> yeah, that sounds cool. Anthony says, when did you decide to go into freelance? It kind of came naturally, right? It did. It kind of came naturally. Um, I started sharing a lot of work on Instagram, actually. <laughs> Um, and really I set up my website and started to, yeah, I think post things more and clients reached out to me, um, to do work, which was very exciting and it made me really consider it as a, something that I can do outside of my full-time job as well. And now, uh, yeah, I, I take on a lot of freelance projects throughout throughout my time and and a lot of times it's brands that reach out to me. I've, I've developed some good relationships with individuals and they'll recommend me for projects. Um, yeah. So I think any time is a good time to go into freelance, start taking on freelance jobs. I think having, yeah, good, being very organized really helps. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and I think it's just kind of figuring out how it could work into your schedule if you have a full-time job or if it's something that you want to pursue, if you just want to pursue going completely freelance, I think the best way to start that is getting clients um, and understanding your workflow. And then once you feel confident enough and you think that you have enough to sustain yourself and yeah, I think it's, it's very fun. I think that's the dream for a lot of creatives too, yeah. is to be freelance, <laughs> be, your own, be your own boss. Let us know if you've just joined the stream, say hello. And any of you that are new to Adobe Live, love to welcome you. So say hi, tell us where you're from. We have about half an hour till the portfolio review. So you can submit your portfolio using the link um, at the portfolio review tab at the top of the chat. And we'll be looking at two of those in about 35 minutes. I'm excited for that. <laughs> yeah.
Hi, Mohammed. So if you missed the beginning, Stephanie is creating an illustration and then she's going to make it animated. So it'll be a GIF of this girl's head Moving back and Moving forth back to the music. Forth. She's listening to music. Mm -hmm. She's creating something. She's in the flow state. I'll turn the opacity up on the sketch layer. Oh, so yeah. So can that see. was the original <laughs> sketch. Yes. Jeffrey says, I love the drawing. It looks like she has frosting hair. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I've and never thought Anthony of it. Anthony says, the pink really stands out. So cool. Thank you. Yeah, I do draw a lot of the people with pink hair. <laughs> yeah. So those are the sketches she crumpled up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the process. It's part of the process. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of my <laughs> personal stuff is rejected sketches uh, from client things that maybe. I really liked, but they didn't want to go forward with, so then I'll tailor it to be, oh, so it cool. doesn't get it lost. It still has a life. Yeah, it still has a life. I actually have a folder on my desktop called Rejected Sketches, so oh. <laughs> sometimes I recycle them for different things. Anthony says, like all artists, we must crumple paper. Yes. Bye, Jan Eric. Thank you for all your advice. Have a great dinner. And yeah, enjoy your dinner. Jeffrey says, what is the secret message on the paper? Oh. <laughs> it's a secret password. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary says, your sketch is so awesome. Thank you, Rosemary. <laughs> or Rosemary. Rosemary. Yes, thank you. What color should I make the mug? <laughs> Maybe that's something everyone in the chat can yeah. talk about. Hi, Noor. Let us Hello. know what color should we make the mug? Jeffrey asks, do your rings get in the way when you draw? No. You're used <laughs> to them. Yeah. I feel like if you took them off, you'd be like, oh my god. Yeah. My yeah. hand is naked. Um, no, they never get in the way. I, don't, I usually don't take my jewelry off. <laughs> yeah, so. me neither. I have some rings that I always wear. Yeah. I feel like I would lose it if I took it off. Jose says purple. Ooh. Anthony says blue. Amanda says mint with dots. Ooh, I like that idea. Yeah, a little texture. Yeah, that could be really Everyone's fun. gravitating towards cool colors. I like At that idea. At least that's a trend. Yeah, let's <laughs> give that a let's play around in there. Pop 
Pablo says dark pink. Oh, departing Ooh. from the trend. I think I'm going to go. I really like the idea of someone said purple. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like a light purple would be cool. What's in the mug? Coffee. <laughs> yes. Coffee. Yeah, coffee. <laughs> For sure. Lots and lots of coffee. Heidi says this piece would be such a fun mural. Thank you. <laughs> I actually really want to work on mural, more mural and large scale stuff this year. So hopefully that comes true. <laughs> when you did the self-driving car piece, was it delivered to them as a digital file or what did you? Yeah, yeah, it was. And they printed it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really, it was a really fun, project getting to figure out how to get it produced. Yeah. Too. yeah, so you had to figure out, like, work with the printer. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and work with all um, people locally to where the office was. And the client, she was really, she was so nice and really appreciated me helping her out, too. Because yeah. I'm not the most print savvy person, but um, yes. It, yeah, got it printed, got it stretched on a canvas. So I had to make sure it was a good Didn't resolution. Get distorted yeah. Or anything. I was so nervous that yeah. I would deliver a file and something would be wrong, but yeah. Cool. Turned out really well and looked nice and crisp. <laughs> Alberto says, I'm part of a pop-up gallery in Miami. If you want a wall to work on, hit me up, Stephanie. Maybe for Art Basel 2020. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> That's cool. That would be awesome. I like this just how it is. It's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, right now I'm really liking how the colors are coming along. I think I want to add a foreground area here. She's working at a desk. Maybe it'll be a off-white desk, like my desk at home. People are being funny in the chat. <laughs> but I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> indulge them. <laughs> but it is a good trick to making a straight line. Look where you want the line to end while drawing and draw towards that point. Mm -hmm. Good tip. Yes. I like how the whites contrast. I couldn't imagine it, but now it's like yeah, so obvious that there are two whites, <laughs> the paper and the desk. Yeah, I think um, in my in like color exploration, I've learned that pure white or whatever the hex code is zero 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 or FFFF. I don't know. One is black and one is white. But yeah, I always like to add a little bit of a tint to the whites because I think it really helps other colors mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm 
Noor had sushi for dinner. So what time is it for you, Noor? Who else is eating dinner? We're eating breakfast. <laughs> or wish we were eating breakfast. Tim says, F, 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 because it's freaking bright. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always miss, I always forget both of those. I should know, but. Okay, cool. I like how this is coming along. Oh, for Noor, it's 10.35 p.m., so we're 12 hours apart. Nice. What does the future look like, Noor? What's been happening? Mm -hmm. Amanda's having soup. It's 7.30 p.m. Nice. Mm. And then Tanvir is 14 hours ahead of us. It's 12.30. We've got the whole world covered. So we have just about 20 minutes, 22 minutes, until we review your portfolios. So make sure you submit those. We'd love to see your work. It's a great opportunity to show your work to everybody and get some feedback. And we will be nice. Yes, absolutely. Nora says, oh my god, yeah, we're all time travelers <laughs> in this live. I love yeah. to think of it that way, too. That's Really awesome. We're all on Adobe Live time, it doesn't <laughs> matter what time zone you're in. Akshay, we review portfolios, not every stream, but we definitely do it once a week. Um, I'm not here every time, so I don't know if it happens every time, but there's more opportunities for sure if you're not ready today. Alex is asking what tablet stand we're using. So this was provided by us, right? You didn't bring it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's an Adobe Live stand. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, I really like it. And I think when I go home, I might get one for myself. Yeah. What is the brand? Oh, I'm gonna lift this up. Can we lift yeah. it? Yeah. It's called Elevation Lab. Yeah. <laughs> and it has different heights. Heights. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. I thought when uh, you all pulled it out, I was like, oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I want one too. Alex, I'll buy one too if you get one. Then we can put stickers on it as well. <laughs> yeah, Alberto, I remember portfolio review being on Thursdays as well, but you know, things change up around here. It's not always the same. We're trying to be interesting, surprise you. <laughs> Every time I come in here, they tell me new things and I'm excited because it's not just the same old day every day. Oh, it's called the Draft Table by Elevation Lab. Cool. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, thank you. It's, yeah, it's, it definitely really helps. It, it feels very natural to have it slightly at an angle, too, and it's probably better for your better posture. For, <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. Um, definitely better for your posture.
Another very cool feature about Fresco um, that I use a lot too is the grouping feature mm -hmm. as well. Um, if you are familiar with Photoshop layers and, and Illustrator layers, but mostly Photoshop, you can group things together um, like this little one here. So a very nifty and convenient feature. <laughs> M.A. said, what's behind it? Is it a garden? It's just a plant. Just a plant. Inside, <laughs> indoors. Yeah, I have, I think, upwards of 19 or 20 house plants at home. Um, and I think that I, I have a lot of them in my workspace, and it really just helps create a nice atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you live in a city. Yes. It's nice to have a connection to the natural world. Absolutely. Mozna is asking, is it easy to work in front of people? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, I used to get nervous about that a little bit, but I think with the time, I got more confident in my own skills. So yeah, it's, it's nice. It's fun to work with an audience. <laughs> I also sometimes will work in like a restaurant or a cafe, um, which is really fun. And then at work, my nine to five job, a lot of people will come over my shoulder and look at what I'm doing too. So yeah, I think feeling comfortable working in front of people is definitely something that comes in time though, so. Yeah. Do you have people come up to you if you're in a cafe being like, what are you drawing? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Sometimes people like peek over, I, f I feel like it's usually other creatives who, or, or art, artists um, who will see me working on an iPad. Mm -hmm. And I, a lot of people are very curious about that. So yeah, they'll ask me what I'm working in and, and different like technical questions, which is really fun. It's also an interesting way to meet people as well because I've been in, working in public places and people come up and they're like, oh, I'm an art director or I'm an illustrator as well. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very fun um, thing to do. I also like to, I really love to travel and uh, I always bring my iPad when I travel and will make time to work on some creative projects in a different place. Yeah. Hi, Kiara. Welcome. Kiara says, beautiful illustration. Thank you. I think I am going to make this paper pure white. <laughs> now that pure I look at white. it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cool. So I think I'm going to add lines in now. Or some line work in there now. but I really want to figure out what I'm going to scribble onto this paper. scribble. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of technique involved here. <laughs> Jeffrey, it's called Sticker Mule. So if you go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 20, you can get 10 stickers for a dollar. Mm -hmm. I'll just leave it one color for now.
Alberto is asking if you use paper like on your iPad. Have you ever used it? No. It's like um, a plastic film that you can put on your iPad to make it more right. rough. Um, no, I've never used that. But I personally prefer like the smooth surface of the mm. iPad. Um, if there are any Wacom, 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 Wacom. Uh, anyone who uses a Cintiq or a drawing tablet, I definitely notice there's a little more tooth on yeah. that screen. And um, I, yeah, I, I don't mind it, but I do, I think I definitely prefer a smoother screen and I found that it's easier just to glide my hand across there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I feel like it depends what kind of illustration you're doing too. Yes, definitely. Because if you're doing something that's like evocative of charcoal mm -hmm. or really textured, it helps to feel that when you're drawing, but yeah, this kind of style, you don't really need that. You can glide. Yeah. Wacom, thank you, Tim. <laughs> Wacom, a Wacom tablet. Nora's asking if you'll animate steam coming out of the mug. I wasn't thinking that, but I think that that's a really great idea. Yeah, so, like she's like yes. this, and then the steam is coming I out. Think, yeah, I love that. Thank you for the idea, Nora. <laughs> Let us know if you have any questions for Stephanie about illustration, getting clients, working in advertising, living in LA, um, anything. Yeah. And we'll answer them. That's why we have the chat. Owl asks, where is the best public places to work? Wow, um, I personally really like coffee shops. Uh, I live in LA, so there are a lot of really fun places around me that usually have really good atmospheres, good music playing, mm -hmm. good coffee, um, and have free Wi-Fi, <laughs> which is really nice. Um, yeah. I really like to go to parks as well. I have a dog. So mm -hmm. um, I will take him to the dog park or to a park and let him run around and I'll sit there and work. Uh, recently I've been going to a lot of botanical gardens as well. Um, so if cool. you like plants and if there's a botanical garden in your neighborhood um, or in your city, which a lot of cities do have some place like that. Museums are really awesome too. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I was in school a lot of my classes would require us going to a museum and drawing things there, whether it was like perspective work or quick figure studies. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think any place, as long as you can find someplace comfortable and yeah, have a good seat and some coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nor says, how do you deal with clients that are always putting budget forward rather than value? That is a very good question, and I think that that is something that a lot of professional artists deal with. I think being, I think understanding what your pricing is is very important as a freelancer. It's definitely something I learned the hard way when I started out. Um, typically, I mean, so how do you deal with clients that are always putting budget forward rather than value? I mean, I would tell them that this is, I think you would just be set in what your pricing range is. And if they don't understand that, then I've noticed that 
they might not be the best client to work with. Um, mm. It is unfortunate that some clients expect you to do work for free or people expect work for free, but I think um, it's kind of our obligation as artists to price our work according fair for us as well and be firm with that and, and be honest with your rates up front. Yeah. 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 It's definitely a struggle though, so I, I totally get that. <laughs> And Tanvir asked, where is this kind of illustration mostly used? Web design or? A lot of editorial work, um, social content. Uh, I saw you had some work for Allure magazine. Yeah, yeah, I did a series uh, recently. I've did a couple series recently for Allure magazine. Um, about mental health, and so mm. that was really cool because it was it was digitally published. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like a lot of editorial work, I would say, is probably the bulk of my clientele, and then advertising work of various sorts. Mm -hmm. um, I also recently did. I one of my clients is Smirnoff, <laughs> oh. um, and I recently did a lot of Giphy stickers for them. Oh, so. Cool. Total, total social based stuff. So yeah, yeah, it's really cool to have a different, a lot of variety in your clientele. Yeah. Yeah. What will be used to make the animation? Photoshop? Correct. Right? Yeah, so for this type of animation, um, it's really simple frame by frame. Um, cell animation kind of. Uh, and I will draw the layers in um, Fresco and then bring it into Photoshop and, and use the timeline tool to set it up there. But I like these questions. <laughs> yeah, great questions. Oh yeah, Nor, great questions. <laughs> Sometimes starting as a freelancer, you tend to accept everything that comes to you, even if it's better not to. Yes, uh, that's definitely something I learned right away. Took on yeah. a lot of projects because it was very exciting. And, and it's really good. I think when you're starting out, yeah, you should accept uh, an arrange, uh, array of projects, um, but also, I think understand what your understand like you know how much time you have, um, what mm -hmm. you really want to be doing as an, an illustrator or designer or whatever your creative background is. Um, yeah, th it's always it's a very delicate balance between taking on a client and doing work that's rewarding to you. So I think in time you you learn. Every project is a definitely a learning process, mm -hmm. and I always try to do post-mortems with projects to see if they went well or what I think I could do better next time or just working on my workflow and my client workflow. So yeah, don't settle <laughs> though. <laughs> I always have to add a little smiley in somewhere. So we have about four minutes left to submit your portfolio and looking forward to getting some submissions so we can review two of these in about four and a half minutes. That's the one the deadline is and then 
we'll be looking at those and giving you some feedback. And when we review the portfolios, we'll be in a different place. Yes. We'll travel yes. to space. So get ready for that. I've always wanted to go to space, so. <laughs> Noor says, it's not an Apple laptop, it's an orange. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you're just adding some accent lines. You're not outlining everything. Yeah. I realize that I like, yeah, just to add some accents, just some features to really give a little more form to it. But I, mm -hmm. yeah, I really like more flat look to my work. So just a couple accents, usually facial features or features of like details on the foreground. Um, sometimes I'll bring in like extra line work to add texture or um, add more details. Like I definitely want to add some spots to these plants. Mm -hmm. so I think that that would be really fun and um, another opportunity to bring in a cool color, too. Akshay has, says, how do you get 38,000 followers on Instagram. Is it the consistency in a unique art style or your work and the people you're associated with? Sounds like all of those things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all of those things. Uh, I definitely used to post a lot more on Instagram um, work I was doing. I definitely think it's a great platform for creative people to share their work. Um, and so I think when I started posting several years ago, because I posted a lot and I was really working on my style, I think it gained attention from that. And I've also done a lot of work, um, social specific work for different companies. Um, and through that, have gained a good following from there. Um, yeah. Uh, it's definitely something I did not expect. <laughs> um, it's fun, for sure. But yeah, I think consistency in your work and developing your own style, and then once you've you know, developed more clients and they share your work, it just kind of is something that comes over time. Hey, is it Yorin? Am I pronouncing it right? Welcome, thanks for coming and watching. So less than a minute left for your portfolios and we've chosen two that we're gonna be showing. So Yay. stay tuned to watch for that. And if you didn't get a chance to submit your portfolio right now, there will be more opportunities. So don't worry about that, just get it ready and you can submit it in the next stream. So Stephanie is adding some outlines to her work and then what do you do with the other layer? Well, I'll ask you later. Okay. Because we have, <laughs> we don't have a lot of time. No worries. <laughs> oh, I like that color. Thank you, yeah. All right, so we're gonna take a little break and travel to space, and we'll be back with you to look at the two portfolios. So we'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Okay. 
We're back. Hello. Okay, time to look at portfolios. So we've chosen two. And the first one, you can see it on the screen, the spaceship screen behind yes. us, <laughs> is Mr. Calavera. Oh, so nice. let me make this full screen. So it says art direction in Mexico City. That's really cool. Very cool. Are you watching us? Say hi in the chat. So there's also an Instagram link here. Um, Let's look at a lot of projects. Nice. Yeah, there's a ton of projects. I immediately love all of the variety and color um, that you're bringing into your work. It's very cool. Yeah. Should we click into a project? I think so. Yeah. I really like the first one. Um, yeah. What do we have here? Nice. Call center branding. Cute. Nice. I like your use of color. And I love... Oh, look at yeah. the other faces. <laughs> Hi, you're in the chat. Hello, welcome. Yeah, I really love um, the use of color and line work here. I think it's really cool. And I think um, you can definitely see, I'm assuming that these are different expressions that people who might yeah. be using call center. So these are really great. My favorite is this one. Yes, me too. <laughs> the money sign eyes is also really awesome. Yeah. And this is so cool that it really conveys having like an earpiece yes. on. And a single line. Nice type work. I like that you've shown um, different in situ examples of the work as well. I think that's such a great thing to do if you've worked on branding or different collateral that if you can show it live. And I think you did a great job of putting it together in your project page. Yeah. Very cool. I want to see this one. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, I love Nara. this. Oh, so it looks like a, kind of like a paint by numbers setup here. This is really cool. Yeah, what did you use yeah. for this? What program did you use? That's fascinating. Yeah, I love how you've separated the shades out um, in different shapes. And I love the color. I love the warm tones in the person in the front. And then I love this kind of futuristic pixely background. It looks like there's a little, little glow on there. I think it looks really good. Yeah. And great facial structure as well. Yeah, I would love to know what program um, the yeah, sketches. Yeah, so <laughs> some feedback for this. We want to know who this is, mm -hmm. um, what program you used. Well, maybe you, you can tag. So you could tag, since you said Illustrator, you could tag illustrator. illustrator as a tool. Nice. Oh, it says Nara Hindu Goddess here. Beautiful. Okay. So maybe add that at the top so we know mm -hmm. what it is. That would be really helpful. Like you added the call center thing yeah. at the top and we knew immediately what, it, what we were looking at. Yeah, I definitely have found that um, just adding one or two sentences of context of the piece that you worked on, whether it is a client piece or a personal project really helps the viewer understand what you were thinking. You can reference the materials that were used in it or the program or if it was like a series of projects. Um, this is really awesome too. I love the hot dog illustration and the different use of texture in there. Great. Very nice. Yeah, love all the spot illustrations on the menu. So it looks like you've done a lot of restaurant um, branding stuff. Yeah. Are these all local in Mexico City? This is nice. cool. I want to go there. Me too. <laughs> I love the coaster, how you use the main um, logo mark as a pattern on that. I think that's really cool. Yeah. It's a great way to really um, express the branding in different print pieces. And I do really like these colors as well. And I like that you put the Pantone references in there too. Mm -hmm. Very cool.
Ooh. This is awesome. This is cool. Oh, it's a tattoo design. Oh, wow. Very cool. This is awesome. I would recommend, since this is a really intricate, cool piece, I think that you might want to reorder the way you presented this in your Behance project page and possibly make the final illustration full width so that viewers can really see all the details. Mm -hmm. um, I love that you show your sketch as well as some tighter crops so that people can see the details. But I think that the final full sketch is really great and has a lot of different um, visual elements and I think being able to see it more full screen would definitely be very beneficial. Yeah. But very great work. Agreed. Yeah, I want to see this. Blue Garden. Oh, look at this lettering. Great. This is very cool. Love the hand drawn type. That's something Fashion I. Fashion design type. Cool. Yeah, yeah I like it looks this. like you put a lot of work into this initial sketch. Yeah. That's very intricate. Yeah. Nice and then work. pen tool. It's a lot of work on the pen tool doing all that. Yes. So well done. <laughs> yes, very well done. All right. So I think we should move on to the next person. But this was really awesome. Um, I can't wait to come to Mexico City <laughs> and see your branding on the restaurants. So well done. And then our next one is John Lee. I'm going to take off my helmet. I you can to. take it off if you want. It's time. It's time. I was getting hot. <laughs> OK, so John Lee is next. Um, looks like a lot of Star Wars stuff. That's cool. Very cool. S the We're Last here. Jedi. Whoa. Wow. For, at first, I have to say I really love the texture elements that you've brought in here. Yeah. Very cool. The Last Jedi study created in Adobe Photoshop using various Kyle Lipster gouache brushes nice. from the Annie Leibovitz photo shoot. Beautiful. Very nice. Yeah, I love. Uh, Look at that. Yeah, the detail, the way that you bring in the different lighting into this. I love that you can really see the texture of the brushes in a lot of places, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And the fold in his hood too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that being able to get to draw fabric um, is definitely a challenge. So I think you've done a great job here. It's very beautiful. Yeah. Great yeah, work. Really nice. The Howler. This is cool. Nice. You really get the sense of movement. Yes. In here. Yeah, I love the glow on the the light streaks in the back, I think that looks really cool. And I love the illustration style that you've um, used in this one. I think it really is reminiscent of Star Wars and the old mm -hmm. movies. Um, yeah. Black and white line work was in fresco. Amazing. OK, so you referenced a, a model of a ship from another artist and then added cool. these effects and everything. That's really cool. Nice. <laughs> so these are various characters in a sports bar, I'm guessing. Yeah. Fun. That's cool. I like the Some dog. illustrations I created using Fresco for a local microbrewery chain. Kyle Webster's bone dry ink brush was the hero tool. Great. That's awesome. That's, I love that the characters are imaginary mm -hmm. <laughs> um, animals or dinosaurs that have come to life. I think that the fashion choices are really fun too, and I love the details that you've put like in the soles of the shoes as well as the fabric too. Mm -hmm. Really cool. This is definitely a fun project to have at a brewery. <laughs> yeah, and even though there's detail and everything, 
the beer is still very much the protagonist. So you've yeah. made sure the beer stands out. Yes. That's what I first noticed. I was like, oh, they're at a bar. Yeah. So that's really cool that you could still keep that focus. Yeah. And keep the, the beer as the hero. PBS versus NPR. <laughs> Fun. And we'll see this one too. Hmm. I'm going to go to the bottom. Sorry for scrolling, just to read. This was my entry in the 2018 Star Wars Fan Awards. Oh, okay. It's like a would be comic co book cover. Cool. Nice. Very cool. I love that you're able to bring in a lot of different texture and line work, but it still looks very cohesive. Mm hmm. And it's nice to see the sketch as well as the final colored in piece. Yeah, this looks like a real comic book cover yeah. for sure. Cool. Good job. Oh, we have to see the Yoda one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have waited 34 years to see what became of Luke Skywalker, and today's <laughs> the day. <laughs> yes. Great. This is really cool. I love it. So John Lee, diehard Star Wars fan. <laughs> um, I think the only thing I would say is put your summary at the top. Yes. Um, so we don't have to scroll down. But your work looks really great. Yeah. So is this all you do, Star Wars illustrations? If you do other stuff, it would be great to see it too. Mm -hmm. Just if a client wants to see what you're capable of and they don't like pigeonhole you in one yeah, definitely. thing. But if that's your thing then it's great, you've gone for it, and you're really good at it. Yeah, absolutely. I have noticed that the more variety I share, um, it just brings in different clients, it's fun mm. to work on different projects. I love when I see illustrators try to work in different mediums, or work in different mediums, like animation or whatever it is. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, it's nice to see the versatility. So this is really nice. All right, thanks, John and Mr. Calavera. Thank you. For submitting. And those of you that we didn't see your portfolio, I hope you submit next time and you continue working on your portfolios. I know that I will. <laughs> so do you want to jump back in so we have a few more minutes? Yes, absolutely. To keep working on the main project we're working on here. Jan Eric said, John Lee Walker. <laughs> That's his name. So you had that other layer where you were um, working on making her head move. Yeah. So do you have to, was that just to visualize it or are you going to use that? Yeah. Layer? So typically my process with these simple animations are to create the frames. Um, so I did those sketches earlier here, and then what I'll do, if it's going to be something more simple where only maybe a couple different components of the illustration are going to move, I will have my base illustration, and mm -hmm. then a couple. I will redraw only the parts that will move. So once I finalize this and I really like the style, um, kind of my like anchor layer as I internally call it. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of make all my decisions before going into the animation phase because I've just found that for workflow, it's easiest to have everything set or at least pretty finalized because once you start creating a ton of layers when you animate um, it, or already have it all in your timeline, it's a little harder to go back and forth. Um, it's not impossible, but I've just noticed that it's way easier for me to get everything on the paper or on the tablet here um, and then break things out. So um, someone mentioned adding steam to the mug. So since the mug will stay static and I'll only add a steam element, I'll just create another layer sequence um, where I create the steam. And then since only her head really is going to be bobbing back and forth, I will just redraw her head and probably her facial features um, the strings of her 
headphones and her hair probably moving back and forth a little bit. Yeah, but if it was a more complex illustration, like a walk cycle, I mean, more complex animation, like a walk cycle, or maybe she's moving throughout the space uh, in a different way, then sometimes I'll have to redraw the whole, the whole illustration over and over again, depending on the style in which I want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to add some texture to these plants. And at this point, I feel like I've really added a lot. So I'm going to turn off my sketch layer because yeah, it's a little it confusing. Good. Yeah, I like where it's going. Before I forget, I noticed some gaps. So fill that in over here. Oh, Alex just <laughs> bought the tablet stand. Oh, nice. Now we have to buy it. <laughs> that was very fast. But yes, I definitely want to get that as well. So we're nearing the end of today for Stephanie's stream, but we're going to be back tomorrow. So there's more to come. Yeah. Yeah. We have a few more minutes. Nice. And there's a lot more today too. So if you stay tuned on Adobe Live, there's more coming with XD streams. So any of you who use XD, um, here's the schedule. So we had the daily creative challenge this morning. Now we're nearing the end of our stream. And then at 1130, Julian Crespo is going to be doing an XD creative challenge. So hopefully some of you have been following those. And then Jesus is going to be doing XD prototyping at noon Pacific time. So stay tuned. There's always a lot going on here. Hi, Jimmy. Mohammed said, how do you know that black lines are good? Not more, not less. That maybe yeah. asking, how do you know when to stop outlining? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I only like just to add enough so that you can get the idea of the shape that's there. Like I, I like to view a lot of my, when I'm working, I like to view a lot of the different elements as shapes. If you break it down like that, I found that that's kind of an easy way to approach it. So if I didn't add in these layers here in the sweatshirt, it would just kind of look like a green blob. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, anything that needs definition. Yeah. Like her chin. Subtle definition, yeah. Yeah. Um, just to give it a little bit more dimension in that way, but while still keeping it on the flat side. And 
I personally like this approach mm -hmm. for my work the best. Yeah. Hi, Elise. Nice to see you in the chat. Hi, Elise. <laughs> Rosemary says, thank you so much for sharing. Thank, thank you. you for joining. Yeah, thank you all for your great questions. Yes. Thanks, Jeffrey. Let us know if you'll be joining us tomorrow, too. We'd love to see you come back. That's something you can't do on a piece of paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let me tell you, there are definitely a lot of pros. The bucket tool is my favorite. <laughs> around a little bit. Thanks, Anthony. Take care. Thank you all. <laughs> we have another four minutes. Oh, perfect. I'm going to keep on working. Yeah, on keep going. <laughs> right. We're just emotionally preparing everyone <laughs> that we won't be here in four minutes. For the departure. <laughs> everyone, seatbelts on for departure. Joseph asks, will you be animating tomorrow? Yes. Yes. So we'll continue working on this, and she's going to take it into Photoshop and animate it. So that's going to be really fun to watch. Definitely stay tuned for that. Ian Eric says, this reminds me of the illustrations on the Dropbox site, and that's a good thing. Thank you. They have really <laughs> cool illustrations on there. Yeah, they have done a lot of, their branding is very cool. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the first time Elise is watching. That's great. <laughs> I'm glad you were able to tune in. Thank you. It's always fun to see when people are first time watchers. And Elise is my friend too, so that's cool. It's yes. extra cool. Yes. All of you are cool, but I don't know all of you. So you know Elise, Carl? Yes. I also know Elise. Oh my god. <laughs> She's really famous. Yes. She lives here in San Francisco. And Tim and Jan Eric are veterans of Adobe Live. So anyone who's new they can answer any questions. And Tim is very cool. Yes, you are. <laughs> Tim is like uh, a spiritual guide for the Adobe Live experience. Thanks, Tim. I feel like I'm, I could fall asleep because I'm so calm. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm watching you do this. It is a very calming process. I do a lot of my work in the evening. I'm definitely a, a night owl. Oh yeah. And although I try to reduce my screen time as much as possible right before bed, I've noticed that this is a good way to relax my mind and get ready to wind down. Yeah, as long as it's not like texting and stuff, yeah. I feel like this isn't too hard on you before you go to bed. Yeah. So we're nearing our last minute of the stream, so we're gonna have to actually... Say goodbye? Yeah. <laughs> that went by so but fast. But <laughs> we'll be here tomorrow, and we'll continue this project. So you're going to take it into Photoshop, animate it, and we'll see you again then. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us Thank today. Thank you for being here. Bye.